Well, I'm here working on my Venso, my hardtail, and I was going to put a, or I am going to put a SRAM NX dub crank set on it. And I was just going to, you know, I was just doing this and decided to break the camera out and document a little bit about it. So video, I'm just, camera's going to be handheld. Sorry about the quality, but kind of a spur of the moment thing while I was doing it. And I want to show a little bit about how the dub system works and how to put the dub bottom bracket here and the crank set here. So what I had done is I got a really good deal on a dub crank set, had the wrong bottom bracket. It had a press fit bottom bracket, but I got it for 20 bucks. So all I had to do was buy a new bottom bracket. The other thing it had was a non boost chain ring. So I bought a boost other way around had a boost chain ring so i bought a non-boost chain ring because my venso is an order quick release non-boost so i had put it already on my sorry about the mess in the garage on my diamondback hook which has a 73 millimeter bottom bracket 73 millimeter width Decided that I was going to put it on my Venso because the hook is my son's bike. He barely rides it. He just rides it when he visits it. So might get ridden 10 times in the year, maybe. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on my Venso. And my Venso has a 68 millimeter bottom bracket. So I'm going to show how that works. So to remove my SRAM NX dub crank set, it's a self-extracting bolt, so all I got to do is put my 8 millimeter, turn counterclockwise, and it'll self-extract. It'll just come out on its own. Now, I, like I said, I just turned the bolt counterclockwise. Crank comes out on its own. No puller needed. This is a 73 millimeter wide bottom bracket on this frame. So I have on the drive side, or on the right side, I have a 4.5 millimeter spacer that comes with the crank set and inside the actual bearings there are no spacers now when i put it on the 68 millimeter i will still have that 4.5 on the outside but i will also have 2.5 millimeter spacers between the frame and the bearings on each side the SRAM dub uses bigger bearings so you need a different tool than you do for your standard external bearing bottom bracket like a Shimano uh, well Shimano actually has a different one it's smaller and it has but they bring an adapter but this is the standard one that you get with most aftermarket bottom brackets that you would get with an external uh, bearing set in a BSA bottom bracket cannot use this one there's the part BBT 9 which I used to remove my race face bottom bracket and crank from the Venso. A friendly reminder that bottom brackets on the drive side are reverse threaded so they come out by turning them clockwise. Now I tap the non-drive side leg which has the axle out. <laughs> See I almost turned it the wrong way and if you notice there's no spacers okay like I said there's a 73 millimeter no spacers for the 68 i'm going to put a 2.5 millimeter spacer that comes included with the bottom bracket right here on both sides now the reason i know that is because i went to shram's site and they have those specs so i'm not sure if you can see it here but for a bsa bottom bracket 68 millimeter you're going to have a 2.5, a 2.5 on each side of the bottom bracket and a 4.5 on the outside of the drive side. Another feature of the dub system, or for the crank set at least, is that it has this ring here. This is to pre-tension the bearings uh, or tension the bearings after you put the crank arm in. So I back this all the way out towards the arm so I can back it in until it touches the bearing. And then you tighten it with a one millimeter hex right there I installed the non-drive crank arm with 
the axle and now I'm going to put that 4.5 millimeter spacer on there. It has a little lip that goes towards the bearing and actually there's a groove where it goes into. So now I'll just set the leg there, the other crank arm, and tighten it up. I tightened the bolt to 54 newton meters. It says right there what the specs is. I did use a torque wrench. And now I'll go to the other side and adjust the preload. For the preload ring, it's right here. And it gives you a little plus sign with the arrow pointing clockwise. And you can see where you're going to tighten the two millimeter hex after it's done. So I'm just going to hold in the camera while doing this. There we go. I'm just going to turn it. Hope you guys aren't getting dizzy until it stops. All right. So there it hit the bearing. And just finger tight and it won't go anymore. So it's nice against the outer bearing. Now I'll tighten that little two millimeter bolt. I tightened the two millimeter bolt. I made sure there's no play on the axle of the crank arm itself and it's good to go. And that's what it looks like. I think it matches the bike very well. So now here's the question I have for you guys. So now I have the NX 12 speed ready. The guy I bought this from actually gave me the NX 12 speed rear cog set which fits into a Shimano hub, a regular Shimano hub. This is a $100 cog set that he just gave me. Reason he did that was he did not like the NX system for the rear derailleur at all. He said the derailleur didn't shift well. It had play. So he went from the NX system, Eagle, to Shimano XT, which I have on that Diamondback I just showed, the hook, and I have it on my Diamondback 4C. And it is a very good system, very crisp, shifting, excellent. Now, my question is, should I go ahead, I have no experience with the Eagle, should I go ahead and get a GX derailleur, which I've heard really good things about. I already have this. I would have to get a shifter and a chain. All that will set me back about $200. My SLX system works well, but it's definitely not as nice as the XT. So do you guys have any experience with the Shimano XT or L SLX versus Eagle? So again, I would go with the Eagle GX, a little better derailleur. I would have the NX rear cog set because it fits on my wheel that I already have. I already have the NX crank set there with a new chain ring. So derailleur, chain, shifter, about $200, and I have 12-speed Eagle. I'm not sure if I need that big old 50 gear in the back. I have a 30 tooth in the front. Right now I'm running a 46 and I'm not even sure if I really need that 50. So it's a shame to have this and that though and not take advantage of it and just even if it's for curiosity's sake, give it a try. So let me know. I think if there's enough interest, I can show how the upgrade goes and then what I think about it and how to do it and how much it came out to and it would make a nice video too so if there's any interest if there's enough interest i might go ahead and make that investment and go to from shimano slx to shram eagle 12 speed on my raptor without having to change the wheels or anything else let me know what you think Get, leave some comments at the bottom Give it a thumbs up if you like it or if you want me to go ahead and do that next step on my bike. Thanks for watching.